hi guys welcome back to our channel uh tiana here um i hope you guys are well i really <clears throat> i'm not sure where we left off but um today i'll be sharing you sharing with you guys details about uh our miscarriage <laughs> Um, I don't even know where to start. Um, technically, as of now, I'd be seven weeks pregnant. Um, when we were five weeks pregnant, we had a standard early scan with my um, fertility doctor. He was unable to see any baby or sac, um, but he said like it's super early, shouldn't be worried, but he'll check my HCG levels to confirm. Next couple of days were really bad. I was in pain, still cramping, but I had no bleeding and just really worried. We weren't sure what was really happening, um, but we knew kind of that it wasn't going well. Um, come Monday, I did the HCG. My doctor called me straight away and said that my levels were not high enough. Uh, they had gone up to 400, but at, this was six weeks pregnant. Um, they should be in the thousands. Um, he confirmed that it was definitely a non-viable pregnancy and that we would either, we would definitely lose the baby. We'd either naturally miscarriage have a natural miscarriage or there was still the option of it being ectopic and he they can't really test for the two at this point because the baby is so small um so again he just said to watch out for any changes um and go to emergency if it was bad otherwise he thought we would naturally miscarry that week um i saturday night was really bad for me I ended up having a ton of pain and I just felt off like the pain was different it was sort of spread all around my belly not just low um, I started getting fevers and hot and cold sweats I really wanted to go to hospital um, oh, sorry. but I managed just to um, get myself to sleep so um, I didn't go in um, the next day was Mother's Day on the Sunday um, that is when our miscarriage started. Um, I actually went to emergency because of the pain. I was there for about eight hours. It was an extremely long and difficult day for me. Um, I had to leave Noah um, with his grandma. I didn't want to take him to emergency. Um, the whole time I've tried to um, sort of shield Noah from what's going on um because i have been doing a lot of resting and um just trying to lay down and keep myself um, as calm and relaxed as possible over this sort of two week period um but yeah definitely the bleeding and cramping worsened on sunday that's when i first started bleeding um when i did finally see someone uh, through emergency they said that they thought I was miscarrying and just to go home and I could use some endone if I if the pain got worse I really hate endone uh, it makes me feel really spaced out and I hate that feeling um so I really really try to avoid it um just going to say that like I feel extremely sorry for anyone who has had a miscarriage It is so much harder than I thought. Like, you just think, oh, that, that's so sad. They've had a baby, they've lost a baby, or they've had a miscarriage. And um, I know James and I feel totally different about the situation. Like, he's been super supportive, but um, he doesn't really see it as losing a baby. He sees it as his wife's having a miscarriage, and I totally understand and get that. It's just the men tend to really connect when the baby is here and I totally get how he feels that way and I think he understands that for a woman or definitely me in my situation that 
as soon as you find out you're pregnant you feel like you're a mum and you feel like you have a baby and you as soon as you see those words pregnant you don't think that it's not going to end in a baby and I've found the whole situation so much harder physically and emotionally than I thought it would be. Um, I was glad that we knew that we were going to have a miscarriage because I sort of could prepare myself with that was going to happen. Um, but we knew for about a week before, pretty much a week before, and that week was complete torture. You feel like you're just waiting for it to happen every time you go to the toilet, you're checking for blood and you just, is today the day you're going to miscarriage, you cancel plans, I wasn't, I couldn't go to work, I couldn't go out to see my friends, my friends set up coffee dates and stuff to like just pet me up and I just couldn't go, I just, I was like a prisoner in my home, I couldn't leave, I couldn't look after Noah, I had other people come in to look after Noah. Which on top of everything makes you feel like such a bad mum. I just couldn't do anything but sleep and cry. I'm sure everyone's situation is different for, for me, like, I was glad to know, but you're just waiting, you're just, you, it's like you're waiting for an accident, you know you're going to get an accident, it's like, what day is it going to happen, like, I knew it was happening, it was like, when's it going to happen, and you just don't know, and, um, yeah, it all started Sunday with some light bleeding and some clots, oh, by the way, TMI. <laughs> The pain has been so bad. I've been calling James home from work to come look after Noah so I can take the endone because I can't take it while I'm looking after him. I've been having the endone every day. The pain is just so constant. It's just constant cramping but it's just what I get really bad periods and it's three times as bad as that I've been in tears and just like huffing through the pain um the bleeding has definitely gotten worse and heavier it's hard to know when you actually miscarried um from clots and stuff because the baby is so small it's not going to look like a baby um the first clots definitely came on Mother's Day, which was Sunday. Um, today is Thursday. The I don't even know. <laughs> today is Thursday after Mother's Day, and last night was by far my hardest. I th thought I was doing well, except for the last two nights emotionally. I've just completely come undone. <sighs> And I have carried this teddy god everywhere with me for the last two weeks. It's the teddy that Noah picked for the baby and if learning anything, I'm glad we had told our family because I have really needed their help during this miscarriage or loss. But I wish we didn't tell Noah. <laughs> Because he's so excited and keeps saying stuff like, I'm a big brother and asking about the baby and I'm disappointed for him. And I wish that we waited until we like had a proper ultrasound and like a heartbeat to tell him. It's like as quickly as we found out we're pregnant, we found out we're not. <sighs> but um, last night was definitely the worst. Yesterday I told James he could go to work. He's been having some time off. I told him to go to work and that I'd be fine with Noah for one day. 
Um, and by 11 o'clock, I was calling him, asking him to come home because I was in so much pain. Um, the bleeding was definitely a lot heavier. Like at this point, I'm soaking through maternity pads like three times overnight. Um, soaking through sheets. It just felt like I didn't know what was happening with my body. I automatically just, um, hopped in the shower and I was in so much pain. Like I was screaming and on my hands and knees in the shower. James came in because he could hear me and um I think he was worried about me then and just said come on let's get you to bed and let's give you an endone and I was just such a mess and I just I just want it to be over <laughs> I'm trying to get a hold of my doctor just to check that what happened last night is okay like I can't believe that just no one talks about this like there's so many people who once they know that this is what I've had like that I'm doing they're like oh my god I've had two miscarriages I had a miscarriage like all these people I know and yet you feel so alone, you don't know anything about what to expect or what the pain is like. No one tells you. And it's really hard, like, when, like, the daycare teachers know because no one told everyone in his class that he's a big brother and you know that you're going to have to go see them and they're going to ask you and... Oh, it's just, I don't think I've been to work in three weeks. I've been home because I just can't, I can't get up and get going. So. It's still such a, um, it's still such a long process. Um, I think that last night, I guess, with that, the biggest thing that's come out, I would assume that that's maybe when I actually miscarried, but I'm not sure. There's no real way to know, I guess. Um, now my doctor's having me check my HCGs once a week to check that they go down. Um, they should keep going down until they get to zero. If they don't hit zero, it means that there's some tissue left behind that's still producing the hormones and I'll have to have a DNC. Um, which is basically like a, they go in and scrape everything out and make sure everything's gone. Um, I don't really want to have that done. Um... And I don't know. I just don't know. I really just wanted to tell you what my experience has been like because I was so shocked that no one had told me this is what it'd be like. Everything you look at online about like what to expect with a miscarriage that oh you might have some cramping and spotting or um, some heavy period bleeding. This has been ten times as worse as any period that I've ever had in both the play, the pain and the bleeding. And so when you read stuff like that, you think that what you're going through isn't normal and that something else might be wrong, but I'm so sorry to anyone who is has gone through this or is having a hard time with this or thinks that they might be going through this and don't know when I'll be ready to try again. The thought of going through this again absolutely terrifies me. It's broken my heart. <laughs>